he has a team, but he took the million dollars all for himself. This doesn't seem to be just a gem. This seems to be an artifact. I don't see any value for the kid. Three million searches, but nobody knows about it. Was Ohio Distinctive Software really trying to bring value, or were they trying to make money? If you multiply that by 1.8, you have a million dollars. Is the company dead or not? That's not obvious. And if ODS did that, I feel like that they would be in a better place. This is something that only we know. Like, is, does anybody out there actually remember these games? It's funny because most of their online store is stuff that isn't ODS. But like, if I ask somebody, do you know what Ohio Distinctive Software is? They're gonna say no, like 100% of the time. It's interesting, slightly creepy, but original 3D graphics. And a bunch of CD-ROM games have died. ODS is like Atari, Humongous Entertainment is like Nintendo. I think regarding the media that's intended for kids to learn, there's been a lack. A lack, yeah, no, for sure. They could mean that. But then also, it's like, that could also be a good cover-up. A little suspicious. I'm not sure why it's like that, but there was a complaint there. Somebody that had something bad to say about the company. These two are not the same. Only I have evidence that they did. There comes a point in time where you really have to question why. And I'm questioning why. Nobody has really taken an in depth look at Ohio Distinctive Software, the company, the founder the games specifically the games were what sparked the inspiration for this for the for the longest time i forgot it even existed and then one day a character comes to my mind the mascot <laughs> i was like wait a second so then like jot down like what's in my mind and i have a drawing somewhere in this room but i don't know where it is and because of that it's really led me into a rabbit hole where I want to be invested in every single aspect of it now because it just seems like it would be a good gateway to look at some kind of indie project that was kind of faded in the dust that hardly anybody knows about and then it's, it's actually more than an indie project and initially I thought it was just family owned business made this company made these games but it's more than that and I think that's important to uncover as well to figure out what connections they have why they made over a million dollars yet nobody knows about them where did all the money go that's another thing that I want to figure out where did all this money go what connections do they have how in the world did they start making these things because it's not normal and they do seem to have a kind of like a first foot forward on all of this because it's like I can't think of another game development company that really started this before Ohio Distinctive Software. Nobody really knows about Ohio Distinctive Software, but everybody knows about Humongous Entertainment, Living Books, Scholastic. Everybody knows those companies even still to this day because YouTubers make videos about them, but no YouTuber makes a video about Ohio Distinctive Software games. Why? Because they're old. <laughs> They're really part of its time. There's really no story that I've noticed besides a few games here and there, honestly. It's interesting, slightly creepy, but original 3D graphics. It's like it wanted to make learning into an adventure, which I know a lot of things do these days, but ODS might have been one of the first to do it. So I guess that's what makes it a special, unique, and sort of a gem that ha still has yet to be discovered to its fullest. This is something that only we know. Like, is, does anybody out there actually remember these games? Are we the few that know about ODS or it played these games? Bottom line, this, it, this doesn't seem to be just a gem. This seems to be an artifact. You know, I think it's really interesting how people remember stuff and there's two things that happen. Either one, People remember it and then they're like, oh, I'm just gonna go about my day, right? And then there's the other factor 
where people can actually do something about it because I am very much a doer, right? I like to do stuff um, <laughs> kind of in the hole for an entire year uh, working on this. Who do you think, between us, who do you think discovered Ohio Distinctive Soft Software first? Out of both of us? Yeah. I'm, 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 I'm willing to say Do you mean you. like who remembered it or who played the games first? Well, the, the latter, but I feel like the former could also be a good question. Well, I think you remembered it first. Yeah. But I think I was the one who played the game first because I was older. Watching, Yeah, I was watching over your shoulder, uh, watching the game plan yeah. stuff. Yeah. Interesting how the middle child remembers something that the older child should have been able to remember a lot sooner. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. There's just, there's just so much to really, um, to really discover, you know, cause you got the person, you got the games, you got the company. But, but, but this goes deeper than just, oh, some old discs in, in a disc storage thing in the basement. It turns out there's a website where you can order Ohio distinctive software games, but if you look on their website, which honestly their website has so much information, it's ridiculous. But the one thing they don't have is a clear list of all of the games. What they do have on their website is a store, which is closed because of the current pandemic. However, there are a few games that you could buy off of that site. But the thing is, it's not just the, their games on their website. It's a bunch of other things also on the store, which makes you think, what kind of connections do they have? I don't know yet. That's what I want to figure out. I guess it just, uh, I guess it was just lost to time like a lot, like lots of old media. It was its own individual company too. So if it sold out, maybe it would still be relevant. I don't know. They have these weird games and stuff on there that aren't Ohio distinctive software, but they are close in genre of children's ent entertainment, which is interesting. So it makes me think, what kind of connections do they have? If they have a store and they're selling stuff that isn't Ohio Distinctive Software, obviously they have connections with other people. That I don't know. I don't know the who yet. And that's what I want to figure out. What if the, what if, what if, what if the website is just dead or something? Like, would you, even be, would you even be able to buy these games anymore? I don't know. There's so much information on the website. It's ridiculous. It's insane. And I want to go over all of it because it's like there's so much information. The small company that I thought was a small company, but it turns out it's probably more than that from the little that I've seen so far. It's one of those things where it's like you remember the character and then it's like, oh, Ohio Distinctive Software. It's so funny because Ohio Distinctive Software has that company name on like all of their games. And I never thought about it because I was a kid. I didn't care about the game companies. So we got the website. We got the discs, we got the person, the newest date on the very bottom is 2016. That was four years ago. So I don't know if they're just bad at updating their website or if something happened in 2016. And that's what I also want to figure out. I want to figure out what happened. Like, why did they phase out? Why does nobody know about them now? Why are they extinct in a sense? It's also funny, the website is like really dated and it's really funny to see. But it's also not like bad, which is interesting. It toes that fine line of being bad design, but it's uniquely charming because it reminds me of like Windows XP in general. I want to heavily dissect the website because there's so much information on it. That is just gold. <laughs> it's what a website should be. It should be very informational about your company. And I also think it's interesting that the website has a lot of different features that normally wouldn't be on a website, like a photo of the day. I guess it's to highlight his photography skills. I don't know, but like, cool. Good for you, I guess. But it's like, I guess he was also a photographer. I'm not sure. I think that's a question to ask him for sure. The value that this will bring is figuring out if that had value in the first place. Did, was Ohio Distinctive Software really trying to bring value? or were they trying to make money? And those are two different things. Two very different things. You can sense passion from a mile away. It's insane. Passion is priceless. It really is. You cannot put a price on it. It's something that's special and unique and can be cultured over time. 
So it's like, was Ohio Distinctive Software providing value or were they making money? Because right now it seems like that they were making money. We have created health and nutrition software that has been purchased by more than a million people nationwide. My guess is that it's this number right here. So since the percentage of the highest tax rate is 37, we're going to use that number sold at $1, which it's not, but let's just say it is actually, to be fair, I'll make it 40%, 60 cents profit. If you multiply that by 1.8, this, this is the amount of customers they say they've served. You have a million dollars right there. And that's at the product being priced at $1, which it's not. The products are priced at anywhere from 10 to $20. It makes very much sense that this guy has made over a million dollars. It just makes sense mathematically. Yeah, I'm, I'm very aware that, you know, he has to pay his employees and that he has to, you know, spend money on an office. But my whole point was that like, he's making probably more than a million dollars because not every product on his store is sold for a dollar. Like that's not realistic. In fact, 20 times that sometimes. So it just makes sense that he would have that much money even after business expenses like an office and employees. Those are like the two big things. And maybe he doesn't even have an office, you know? So I think value is very important when it comes to physical products, especially games. Like if you're selling games, they should be high quality, right? Maybe everybody works from home, who's to say? In that case, then he's making more money because he's paying less on expenses. But I don't know. In my mind, it makes a lot of sense that he's made a lot of money, if not a million, at least a decent amount to live off of and did not have to update his website for four years. They didn't exactly list that they made over a million dollars, but if you do the math, they say that they uh that over a million people have purchased their products and their products are more than one dollar so therefore it's pretty easy for wow. them to make a profit even with like uh, business expenses and employees and stuff they, they should be making at least a million dollars i think it's the 1.8 number because they say over a million and then they also say 1.8 so i'm saying 1.8 people have been served some of them might have been given for free i know to schools and hospitals they did if you flex on your website that your company's made over a million dollars who does that <laughs> like who does that you know what i mean like what is that saying about the company you know part of me thinks it's because there are a lot of people in his in the founder's life that were like you can't do this and i guess it's a big i told you so from an outside perspective but i don't know that yet so it's like i don't know I would never put that on my website, that's for sure. The one thing that I still don't understand is why would they put that they've made over a million dollars on their website? That's still the one thing that I can't stop thinking about. Like, why would you flex like that? Mm, like, what, what's your rationale? Why would somebody do that in your mind? Uh, to show they have power or something? Yeah. No, like, legit, that's what I thought, too. It's like, no, no, no. First of all, not everybody makes a million dollars. And then, like, who does that? Why would you flex on your website that you made over a million dollars? Like, it just doesn't make sense in my mind. And I'm glad that you also think that because it's not just me now. ODS is pulling a Logan and or Jake Paul. No, no, I don't think it's to that degree. I think that he had probably a childhood where he got told a lot that he wasn't going to get anywhere. And so I feel like that's a subtle flex to his childhood. But that's the only know. connection I can make. That seems kind of stereotypical, though. Really? Yeah. A lot of people are told off that they're not going to become anything and then they become the thing. Mm -hmm. I don't know, man. I don't feel like Ohio Distinctive Software was in it to make money. But at the same time, I do. Because if you flex on your website, <laughs> you made over a million dollars. But you're also making these high quality children's games. It's like you're sending mixed messages. This whole thing feels like mixed messages, you know? Where it's like if you're doing one thing, but at the same time, you're providing good quality content for kids. It's like, how are you supposed to feel at that point? And that's the thing. I don't know if they're making money or making passionate projects to actually help children. Were they actually trying to help children? Who's to say? But that's what we're going to figure out.
100% satisfaction guarantee. Your complete satisfaction is our goal. Within 30 days for a refund, our products have been a part of promotions and joint ventures with businesses in a variety of industries. Everything from food companies and restaurants to healthcare, insurance, telecommunications, and educational institutions. Our distinctive solutions is a state of the art fulfillment house that manages to order processing and shipping for many of Encyclopedia Britannica's online orders. We are pleased to offer a variety of free Ohio Distinctive software resources for parents and children, friends, and even pets, assisting teachers and schools nationwide. Finally, we have a fundraising program designed to put more money into your school than any other fundraising program. It sounds a little cocky, I'm not gonna lie. We invite you to see why 8,000 teachers worldwide use the Ohio Distinctive brand of products. Here's another subtle flex, dude. Ohio Distinctive is proud to be assisting hospitals and patients nationwide. Children have a special place in our hearts, so we have created a free children's educational game site, and we invite hospitals to link to the site absolutely free. Free online health watch designed to identify health and risk and promote healthy living. We offer hospitals a free link to the service. Free online health, see this is interesting. Oh forbidden 403 i guess there's i guess we shouldn't watch our health ohio distinctive is an insurance company partner we make the products that are designed to promote health and longevity we are pleased to offer special resources for charities and non-profit organizations we have created a children's educational cd-rom game for deaf children children's education cd-rom game for blind children in fact this cd-rom is designed to enable blind children to play side by side with deaf children ask us how we might be involved in your organization to promote the needs of deaf or blind children we want to help a range of business services to assist with marketing promotions and product fulfillment we are experts in supplemental marketing a technique for providing additional products and services to your existing customers see how we can offer you guaranteed risk-free results 1987 we have been providing quality products to help individuals families and children we create in-house five nutrition software programs dozens of children's software titles including several bilingual cd-rom products in addition we publish dog and cat books to keep your family pet healthy we also license and sell quality family products we've served approximately 1.8 million customers did you know that ohio distinctive software has connections with insurance companies schools what was the other one? Businesses? Were you aware of that? Uh, the second one so didn't. Well, no, but that second one kind of sounded reasonable. Like, yeah. I, if you told me the 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 second one instead of the first or third one, I I believe you. Yeah, there was another one. It was like insurance Cause, companies. Because they're educational games. Why why wouldn't they yeah. be involved in schools? True, and that's fair. I think when you have a business, it's very important to have a website and a good website that people actually like. When I looked at the website, it was very old and it was very dated. I thought it was a bit charming, but at the same time, um, you need a good website if you got a business. That's just a fact. One thing I haven't looked at is the reviews because I feel like that's going to take a long time because there are a lot of reviews to go over. But I think generally they do come across as like a very genuine and honest company that actually want to help, which is a good sign on the forefront that's that's what they want to portray which is fair oh basically the whole website was pretty genuine from what i saw so far they look like a good company which is a good sign at least their portrayal on the outside which is fair i don't want to be too like critical or like not critical because i think being critical is important in this i don't want to be too i don't want to be cynical regarding this i believe like i i'm very much in the camp of believing somebody until you have a reason not to and like i believe them so far uh with everything i've seen but it's like that cynical side always creeps in it's like well you we don't know yet and that's fair i believe that right now they look like a good company but maybe they won't uh by the end of this who knows but like i think it's important to have an open mind with this whole thing which i do think is important to have for sure that was the other thing hospitals hospitals yeah they have connections with hospitals i mean because that of the, the because of the insurance thing it probably wouldn't seem that unreasonable yeah no i know it's just weird because well, it doesn't unlikely. make sense to me they have like a free online health tracker but if you click the link it's not available anymore anymore I yeah i know and that was for free the only way i could go into this is with an open mind and learn as i go with this specific thing because i didn't want to come across as like a teacher i wanted to come across as a student by the fact of like i'm learning along with everybody else because it's like there's so much to this 
that I feel is like uncovered and just hasn't been talked about at, at all. And so there's that. It's funny because most of their online store is stuff that isn't ODS. Really? Yeah. I'm just kind of surprised that they sell more stuff on their store than their own stuff. That's the one thing. Oh, the other thing is that I didn't know he had a book. And I'm really tempted to buy the book, but I don't think it's important for this specific thing because I'd rather just talk to him in person and talk about, you know, the books and stuff. Their website trademark is 2016, but the actual store is 2020, which makes sense because like all the stuff on there is mostly from other companies from what it looks like. Right. Because they have connections of some sort. Like insurance companies. That's a weird one. I never expected that. <sighs> yeah. I just didn't realize there was so many connections. But yeah, they are partners with Britannica. I looked into that. I know I've heard that from someone before. And yeah. I don't know if I already said We that. actually have a disc from Encyclopedia Britannica in our basement. It's one, another one of those learning games. What caught my attention is that it was like looking through a catalog of sorts of like an old catalog that you purchase because you want to buy old DVDs from like 50s, 60s, 70s, stuff like that. And that's kind of the vibe I was getting with the DVDs because there were no Ohio Distinctive Software DVDs because they make CDs. But I uh, think the connections with other people that they have, they make CDs or DVDs. It's just the website does have a lot of personality too from what I realized and very much shows that like he cares about educating kids, which I do think is important. I do think that's good. And I hope it's coming from a genuine place. I think it is. But right now that's what it seems like. And that's really good. That's a good sign at least for the introduction of what people see when they think of Ohio Distinctive Software. I think that's the one thing that stood out for sure. The fact that like it makes sense that he's made at least a million dollars. Originally I was like, wait, 1.8 customers, that doesn't equal a million dollars. But if you do the math, it makes a lot of sense that he could be making a million dollars. It's very obvious. Um, I just had to do the math and then it actually made sense to me. So. An important question is who's getting the million dollars? Where's that money going? That's an important thing I wanna know. Is it all for the founder? Is it for the company? Because obviously the company is kind of just, I don't know, and that's the thing, I don't even know if the company's dead. The website makes it look like the company's dead. And what's interesting is that apparently the Ohio Distinctive Software Studio is on Google Maps still and there's a, a phone number <laughs> on the google maps and so are are they still open they they don't have hours but it shows if it's open or not so if the company's dead what who's there and then it's like if the company's not dead then what are they doing Legit, what are they doing? They haven't released a project for four years, probably longer than that, honestly, because it's like, I think they stopped making those those children's, enter, children's education games. So it's like, the question is, what were they doing back then and what are they doing now? Back then, they were making kids games that were educational, but also really fun. Now, what are they doing? Where did they go? Why did they disappear? Why, where did the owner go? Like, is the company dead or not? That's not obvious. It's not obvious at all. But where did they go? <laughs> Maybe they didn't go anywhere. Maybe they just phased out over time. It's tough to say. Our shop will be temporarily closed. We will reopen in better times. Their most recent is from April 3rd, which makes sense. I don't think the company's dead because they keep posting on their Facebook page. They posted this year. Temporarily closed. We will reopen in better times. You can still look at the products. Audio CDs, books, business law, accounting, finance, CD-ROMs, <sighs> Scrabble in life. Okay, how do they have connections with, they have connections with Hasbro? Or are they just selling the CDs? I, I honestly don't know. Because I don't think you can just sell the CDs like that. So my guess is that they have connections with Hasbro somehow. I could be wrong, but like, how else are they going to sell these? Here's the Ohio Distinctive Software games. Now we're starting to see them. They're either educational or entertainment based. Oh, another one. Weight loss planner. All right. Cooking and nutrition. Food label analyzer. 
What? Menu Planner Recipe Analyzer 2. What? DVDs. Let's see here. Not seeing any Ohio Distinctive Software DVDs. So really, it's it's really, really educational based with some entertainment thrown in here and there like Mystery Classics DVD set one, Calculus 2. Oh gosh, no. I guess the genre they're going for is DVD. <laughs> this feels like one of those old magazines that you buy when you want to order like really old DVDs. That's this, this is what it feels like. But I'm not seeing any Ohio Distinctive Software DVDs, which makes me believe Ohio Distinctive Software is not a DVD company, but they have connections with other people, so they sell DVDs. Foreign languages, there we go. Ohio Distinctive Software, but most of the languages are, are other people's. Math, we have Spelling Dragon. I remember these, these are what I remember. I've never played this one. Encyclopedia. Oh, you know, I actually remember having some of these en encyclopedia games. Human body stuff, language stuff, planets, weather. Here's Maze Quest. Best one. I think we had this one. The ODS Kids Volume 1. I think I distinctly remember having all of these. So I think we got this. Games. All right. Farmer Greenfields, Virtual Harvest, Health and Self Improvement. A lot of uh, self help stuff but really no ODS stuff. Hobbies, activities, sports, movies and TV, let's go. So no ODS stuff here, I'm pretty sure. I don't think we'll find anything in music, honestly. Sounds apparent, so here we go with the soundtracks again. Techno dance. You can tell this is dated. <laughs> Nature, art, and photography. We have t-shirts now. Ooh, interesting. A lot of bird stuff, a lot of animal stuff. There are a lot of animal t-shirts for some reason. Religion and inspiration. Bible. Yeah, let's go. Ark of the Covenant. USA and travel. Nobody has to make any travel games? I think they did. Yep. I was just thinking about that. Oh, Air Explorer is a travel game. Yep. Wild and then wildlife t-shirts. Cool. But what I want to know for sure is who got the million dollars? Like, was it partially to the company, partially to him? Or did he just take the million for himself? You know, I don't know. Because it's like, if he took the money for himself, is he really greedy? I don't think so. Because, it well, it also depends on if it's just him. Because, like, there's only his name on the website. You know? So it's probably, he's the owner, but I don't know if it was just him making everything. I don't know if it was him. I don't know if it was a team. Like, it, it's not obvious. I want to believe that there is a team. And that the million of dollars, the million dollars went to the team as well. But, I don't know. Because... It's one of those projects where it easily could have been one person, but it also could have been a team. So I think it's funny how I kept saying, oh, on their website, they brag that it's a million dollars. They don't like directly brag, but now it's, I can't fit this. In. <laughs> we'll have to put it in the back seat. Might have to, <laughs> yeah. This isn't even planned. Front might fall out. Ooh, I don't like that noise. We'll just do it. Yes! Oh my gosh. I guess we won't know until we look at the credits. But like, there's only his name credited. On his website though, this is interesting, on his website, he does mention a team. I don't know if the team is his Ohio Distinctive Software team or if the team is the Britannica team, you know? Because there's probably two different teams or at least one. Because they have connections with ODS. I've never heard of Britannica before. It's like a healthy energy drink or something that you find in an ad. Now with zero carbs and zero grams of sugar, Britannica. No, no, no. Actually, Britannica kind of sounds like a medication. Like, just take two doses of Britannica every morning. Yeah, the one thing that I don't know is that if he makes a million dollars, or so he says, like, he also says on his website that he has a team. And so from that point, it's kind of just like, did the money go to him or did the money also go to his team? And who is this team? You know, because it's like with Ohio Distinctive Software, either he could have made the games or he had a team. He says he has a team, but who are the team members and what is this team? Part of me thinks that the team is the Britannica team. Maybe. I don't know. But it's like, I would feel pretty upset if he has a team, but he took the million dollars all for himself. I understand CEO pay is a thing, but like, you know what I mean? Maybe that's why Ohio Distinctive Software kind of just like phased out because he became a millionaire and then now he doesn't have to do anything because he has all this money. I don't know that. Right. So it's like, 
it's tough. It's like, I don't, I want to know where the money went, you know? Cause like not everybody makes a million dollars. Where did the money go? I'm hoping it's to the team, but we don't, but I don't know. That's what I want to figure out, you know? But we don't know until we actually talk to the person. We don't know until like we actually get some insight on the team. I want to find the team. I want to find people that worked with Ohio Distinctive Software. I want to interview them. I think that's the one thing that I learned from all this. I was editing like the beginning of this so far. And it's like, I think the team aspect is going to be interesting. I want to find the team members, talk to them, get their perspectives. I think that's an important perspective to have as well besides the perspective of my brother. It's kind of hard to compete with humongous entertainment as well as things that are like, I mean, all of those games are educational, but ODS would kind of, I don't know if ODS would leave a gentle impact considering it's, again, 3v3D 3 3D graphics. Uh, Hand-drawn 2D animation seems to be a lot easier on the, uh, easier on the eyes, which is probably why uh, humong humongous entertainment is so successful in the first place what happened to humongous Ent edutainment anyway i digress i really don't think anyone else knows about this and if they do that's incredible because you know it's ods we're talking about it's not like it's not like humongous entertainment where it's gotten a lot of praise by many people it's like i would say that uh ods possibly uh pioneered educational content like it's the spark that caused all these other people to say i could possibly do better or what if i did that but i did it in my art style or whatever and i really want to know if there was one before ohio distinctive software because i can't think of one at the top of my head i just can't so if there's one before that i'd like to know because i don't i just don't know Regarding children's entertainment today, uh, there's not a lot of it, and I wish there was kind of more of it, because it seems like the only children's good children's entertainment now. Wow, entertain. I meant education. <laughs> I meant education. Because edutainment, I know. Edutainment. I think right. we need a, a resurgence of children's education, edutainment type things. Didn't Nick Jr. And, do um, something? I mean, about yeah, that? I guess, but like. I don't know. I guess I didn't think about that. Let's get this one. I guess I didn't think about the um, browser games. That's actually a good example that we didn't even talk about. That's actually a Nick good Jr. One. Yeah, like those browser games. For one, ODS is probably not as popular as, uh, as Humongous Entertainment. Like, when was the first Humongous Entertainment Entertainment game released? And when was the first ODS game released? I can sort of see it going as a timeline, like. This might stop here, this might keep going. I think Humongous Entertainment managed to uh, keep its uh, content going even after uh, ODS. Like, y even though Humongous Entertainment probably doesn't have as many games as ODS, like you said, there's probably like 39 of them. And this is how many uh, Humongous Entertainment games there are. If the number is bigger than the previous number I said, I'm gonna look like an idiot. <laughs> Aesthetically, Humongous Edutainment just destroys ODS. Like, it blows it out of the water. Uh, not to say that uh, ODS probably didn't have a part in it. Again, it probably was one of the first of its kind. Educational, fun content. I think comparing something to something else really shows what's good about a thing and what's bad about a thing. Because it's like, Humongous Entertainment and living books those are like the two big ones and those are really good and people remember those but people don't remember ods and i want to know why why do people remember humongous entertainment games like freddy fish like pajama sam and living books games like arthur does whatever you know there's a bunch of those so it's like why do people remember those and not remember ods it's not living books anymore it's a it's it goes under a different name but it still has the living books but it's now like uh, if what Brutal Moose says is true, um, Link Books is can, is now, like, compatible with, like, iPhones and tablets and all that stuff. So it's like, kids who grew up with what we grew up with can grow up with what we grew up with. Or to put it in a more simple term, they could also play Living Books via their smart devices instead of a bulky computer like we did when we were kids. 
all living books were were just a story based on an already existing book. But it's like, oh, you can click on some stuff and play some games and all that stuff. You could argue that people remember living books because they use popular characters like Arthur from PBS. But then why not Humongous Entertainment? There are no shows or movies about any of the Humongous Entertainment games, so why do they stick around? I, I don't know. That's the thing. My guess is story. My guess is that people wanted to try them again because they wanted to test their childhood and figure out if what they were playing back then was any good. Because when you're a kid, you don't really care about quality. You just want to play stuff because you're bored. Once you add enough to a story to the point where you come back for more, you got yourself something successful. You know how some humongous edutainment games have high replayability like uh, the second Freddy Fish game? Prime example! One of my favorite uh, logos as well is the Living Books face. The four horsemen of educational games or the, or the four elements. ODS, Humongous Edutainment, Living Books, and what was the fourth one? Scholastic. Scholastic. Long ago, the four nations lived in harmony, but everything changed when the Humongous Edutainment nation attacked. And to be fair, Atari came out before the NES, so there's, an, there's sort of a parallel. ODS is like Atari, Humongous Edutainment is like Nintendo. <laughs> Ethan's making a face like, yeah, yeah it's, it's <laughs> true, right. it's true. That makes total sense. I gotta get back to playing Animal Crossing New Leaf on my Nintendo 3DS. Oh wait, I sold my 3DS, never mind. I do think it's interesting how you can kind of expect one thing by planning one thing, but it turns into another thing, which is kind of what happened when I interviewed my friends, Will, Taylor, Ian, and David, because I wanted to get a perspective of what another homeschooler would feel about these children's entertainment games from back then. Have any of you guys ever played any like really old kids games on the computer? Yes. What kind of kids really game? Really old like, game. Like Pajama Sam, Freddy Fish, um, any Arthur games mm. of that sort. Oh, Arthur Rabbit? No, like Arthur the Aardvark. Aardvark? Nah, can't say I have. Interesting. So, old so I guess not all homeschoolers know about uh, kids' games on the computer. I remember That's those. Okay, Taylor, what 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 do you remember about them? About. I remember one. What was it? it was Jumpstart first grade. Yeah. Yeah, that's one. Yeah, 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 that is one. Yeah. Actually, Jumpstart Jump is a big Start one. It's yes. like one of the biggest. Yeah. Yeah. What about Keepstar? I remember. I know that. Okay, that's no. that's your, let me, let me see if I'm recalling correctly. I remember some kind of wiener dog. What? Yeah, 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 yeah. No. Jumpstart. The wiener dog. And there's like this vending machine where you had to get like give the right chain to get like your your yeah. snacks or whatever. And I think that it was really interesting how it kind of developed over time. I thought that was really intriguing. Um, yeah, I, honestly, Jumpstart was one I didn't think about, but that is a big one, it actually. Is. I remember playing Jumpstart first grade a lot. Yeah. For sure. There's this one where this guy's like a snow, he's, a, he's an ice climber or something, huh. and then you do all these like mad stuff. Oh, I remember yeah. that. Like Snowy Mountain or something like that. Yeah, I love those games. The, the, the snowball that comes at you. You actually learn stuff. Jumpstart was pretty cool for its time. For sure, yeah. Oh, yeah. Although ODS is the focus, I do think it's important to kind of compare that to other kids' entertainment, you know, to kind of figure out why Ohio just take the software kind of fell off and what makes Jumpstart and Living Books and Humongous Entertainment like the big ones. Because, like, YouTubers still make videos about, like, Humongous Entertainment games. Yeah. Like they're that big, which is kind of crazy. Well, like, Jumpstart was pretty big for me. Yeah. And it was, and he actually looked visually pleasing, you know? Oh, yeah, time. like the art style, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because it's, like, hand-drawn, visually yeah. ap ap appealing, like, art, in a sense. Interactive art. Plus, it teaches mm -hmm. you something. No, exactly, right? Which right. is why it's a lot better than most other games, because games nowadays are mm -hmm. mainly and only built for entertainment specifically. Exactly. Uh, the yeah. older games were built to make your brain expand, not shrink. Exactly, yeah. For sure. Because now... And, like, 
with education games, it's very easy to make a boring education game. Yep. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. Yeah. But I think things like Jumpstart and companies like that figured out a way to actually make it fun. Yep. And that's what I realized with Ohio Distinctive Software. Like, when I was a kid, I remember having so much fun that I forgot that I was learning. By that time, you know, when you are out of ideas, you just go back to the original idea. By that time, it's a whole different generation. Yeah. Generation. That's, that's an interesting point. Because I feel like with this generation, huh. we don't have many children's entertainment games that are trying to bring quality to kids' entertainment. Because all, True. really, to now, it really it is, it's like a coolmath.com. Cool Math Games. So, cool Math Games is an interesting case study because it feels like the website was made so that way teachers can, like, yeah, you can go on this side because Cool Math Games. Most of the games, they're not Cool Math Games. You know, it's it's very... No, like, Diamond 8 stand kind of games. Yeah, know? yeah, yeah. It's sure. like, oh, uh, you got you to make sure you budget correctly. Right. I'm not saying all the games were just like for entertainment's sake. Like you had those few gems like the Lemonade Stand game where it teaches you finances and how to build wow. a business and like hire employees. Like literally that's what they do. It's, it doesn't do it like, wow. it's not in your face with it, but like that's what you're doing to build your Lemonade Stand yep. company. It's like, it's stuff like that. Yep. It's, so like there are a few gems on there, but. It is extremely difficult to ban it, to banish, to balance uh, mm -hmm. teaching kids and then entertainment. But exactly. if you find that balance, like a way, uh, a scale, yeah. if you're able to find it, just evens out perfectly. Oh yeah. Which is how I feel like those older games were. Yeah. Just perfect because it's like you, it teaches you this, and it's enjoyable. Yeah. Not just because it looks good, but because, uh, like, just the gameplay itself is fun. Right. Yeah. So, a lot of uh, yeah, people hard. who make. Uh, learning games focus like completely on the learning and they don't right. ever focus on ever well, having like, fun well that's the problem with like today's day and age um like, it's they think like okay if it's entertainment at all it's bad because mm. right. you i don't get why like if you can have it where it's fun and get educational like uh what we did in my school is uh for math class example instead of doing like those like uh, we did Jeopardy, mm. where we broke up the teams, and you'd have like a Jeopardy board on there, and yeah. you know you have to answer questions. It's like, oh, can I do algebra for 500? No. Yeah. Yeah. It's more visually pleasing. It's going to keep their attention, which yeah. is good. For the older ones, yeah. the more competitive it is, the yeah. better. Yeah. Got the points on there that automatically like knock out the high score. Yeah, competitive that aspect. I didn't think about that. the The first thing I think of is Kahoot. That's the first thing I can think of regarding like competitive educational game. Yeah. But that's interesting and different because it's kind of based on like the teacher and how well the teacher can balance the education and entertainment. So that's yeah. hard to do. So that's hard to test regarding, like, the actual balance. Because you're going to get a different result every single time. Uh, what do you think the future of children's entertainment is going to be? Ooh, that's a because hard Because right one. now it seems like there's a big lack of it. VR <laughs> is blowing up really big. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people are getting VR sets and they're putting them on. I think that VR actually might end up being socialization. Uh, not really. Not, I, not like, I oh, there's no way there's going to be. What I'm saying is, like, a lot of people, people are going to go on that VR. Way. That's how um, people are. People are more face to face. And, yeah. It, it, like, in the I, moment, in the sense, when you're in VR, you're not, you're, you're not getting anything. It's just, it's, a, it's, a, yeah. it's fake. I feel like yeah. VR would be a step backwards. It like would. A big step backwards. I think. But it's blowing up bigger. I think. VR is for educational, educational purposes. I think VR is educational only in the sense of if you're learning something new from a person you don't know, or if you're really practicing how to listen and talk to people that you don't really know. Yeah. You're going to come to the point where you're, they're not going to be able to function without it. Yeah. They're going to be so heavily reliant on this technology. What happens if something happens like when they don't have it with them? Because, you know, yeah. Yeah. When they get to a oh, job, they're not going to be able to handle it. How are they going to communicate? How are they going to yeah. do all this yeah, stuff? Technology is unpredictable. Yeah. 
technology being unpredictable, I think that's very true. Yeah. Especially because I think the reason why we haven't seen a lot of like children's entertainment games is because we have games like Minecraft yep. that can be whatever you want. For and real. some people have literally made like Computers. learning experiences through mm -hmm. Minecraft. Yep. Redstone logic, understanding how you, to uh, use comparators. Uh, people made a phone. They yeah. made a computer. They played Minecraft in Minecraft. <laughs> what are they making? Why are they making it? What's the goal? Yes. And so for a lot of these games and stuff, what is their goal? What's the what is the kids end result? Like why do they why do they play it? Why do they is it because it's fun? Is it because they're learning something? Is it because they want to do something? Like, that's something to think about and look at it. Not just like, oh look, it's a game. Right. I mean it really depends on the kid. You know, because every yeah. kid's different, so therefore every kid is gonna have a different goal and aspiration, you know, with everything. Right. I think technology is making humanity more lazy. Mm, well, think about it. Yeah. yeah. There is a difference between laziness and convenience. Yeah. Yep. And, and those two lines have been so close for the past few years. Like a car. And I, I think that's why things like Minecraft have popped up and a bunch of CD-ROM games have died because nobody plays CD-ROM games anymore. Everybody go, everything's going digital. Right, right. So therefore yeah. it makes sense that Minecraft is like the big thing in like the kid space. So then maybe it did just die out because of the technological advancement. Not that necessarily because they did anything wrong, but just because they weren't ahead of the game. That's possible. Yeah. It's funny because okay. those old living book CDs are now on smartphones. So they wow. have converted their CD games to a smartphone. And if ODS did that, I feel like that they would be in a better place. Wow. But they haven't. Hmm. Hmm. But I think it's also interesting because ODS uses a lot of 3D graphics. But if you look at something like Humongous Entertainment where it's 2D graphics, it's like, oh, it makes sense because it's 2D versus 3D. It doesn't make sense because Minecraft is 3D graphics, and that's really popular. Mm -hmm. So then it's like, I guess the dimension of the graphics don't matter in a sense. And even with like Minecraft, like when you start, if you finish the house, like interior design, like how do I take these resources that I have, with the, this finite resources, and make this look good? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't know we were going to talk about Minecraft, but that makes a lot that of is sense so actually. Funny. Like. I guess, kind of the bottom, the weird bottom line is you can learn anything from anything, honestly. Really, yeah. But there are some things that tend to be more educational than entertainment based. Yeah. Hmm. And I think Minecraft is that weird mixture, yeah. or it could be either. Then, it, like, you can learn life lessons from anything, right? Like, me any form oh, of media. But I think, regarding the media that's intended for kids to learn, there's been. A, a lacking, a lack, yeah, yep. for sure. It has been. It's more it's all now. Bright color stuff, and then they oh, just yeah. get bored, and they're just staring at. It's just Ryan. It's just Ryan's toys reviews. It's like <laughs> it's opening toys. There's nothing like. There's no education in that. There's it's no. Just watch me open toy. Hear toy. Yeah. Wow. Which is the big problem I've got with a lot of movies these days too. For kids, like there's these kid shows that they watch, and I look at them like this is the stupidest thing I've ever seen. Yeah. It's like it's not that it's like it's a, it's ridiculous for an adult, but it's that I don't see any value for the kid in this. Yeah. There is nothing that it is giving to the child that is worthwhile or anything to learn. It's just, it's just I, yeah. Like, Maybe it's because of the rise of YouTube that we've seen a yeah. decline of like quality kids games because now games have been replaced with YouTube videos because YouTube yeah. videos are free, games are not. Right. So it's all it's all about the convenience. Content. Yeah. Again, it's like it's convenience. Yeah. Dang. I wonder if <laughs> this went really in depth. Dude, I, that's, this is what I'm talking about, just dude. Saying. This is why I need other people's perspectives because I think I fully understand something and then I talk with somebody that has no clue like what I'm talking about and then once I explain it it just goes into this huge <laughs> array of possible journeys which I think is interesting what ended up happening was we ended up talking about the current state of children's entertainment and that is another thing I didn't really think about but it makes a lot of sense and I think that conversation was very healthy to really figure out 
what happened to children's entertainment, why ODS kind of phased out, maybe another possible reason to why it phased out. So I think that was really, really intriguing how that dialogue kind of just spiraled into figuring out why ODS kind of phased out by use of really talking about the current industry of children's entertainment, which was really intriguing. Um, I wanted to get more perspectives basically on that. Right now, the perspective that we need is the customer testimonial perspective. The following reviews are provided by independent reviewers. The opinions expressed are their own and are not influenced by Ohio Distinctive Software Inc. or any of its employees. When companies say that, they could be they could mean that, but then also it's like that could also be a good cover up. We don't know yet until like we actually talk to like the people that have actually worked there. We have 16 customer testimonials here. Hello, I just wanted to express my satisfaction with your computer software. I'm a new teacher just getting out of college and just had a chance to look at some of your items. I just love them. I haven't gotten them in the classroom yet, but I can't wait to put them to use. I wanted to know if you have a catalog you could send that I could pass on your products to my teacher friends. I ordered two additional sets for my god kids. I also work in public school here. We'll be sharing your website and some pages I printed with my teacher friends. So this is another teacher. I have also shared these with friends of mine for their children and found it helpful for my nieces and nephews. I am a teacher, so volunteer in an elementary school for the hearing impaired. I have introduced some of your software into special reading classes and third grade math. Because of the software, I am a hit with the teachers. Kids think the CDs that I bring into class are easier to learn from than books. Test scores are up in my classroom and I have introduced Ohio Distinctive Software and my vanity says your software and my time played a big part of their education. I recently received a recipe analyzer and I'm thrilled with it. I belong to a diabetes support group and I plan to take this information to that meeting tonight. I am also a family and consumer science teacher at the middle school level and I'm wondering for myself and some of my colleagues whether we can get some of these programs to use on site for our labs. We have about 25 computers in the lab. Been receiving your software for more than a year now. I cannot begin to express how much we love it. We have three children, 16, 14, 7. Each one of them enjoy using your programs. It's been especially great to incorporate these CDs in our homeschooling environment. See, they, we got the homeschoolers here. I noticed there were some uh, homeschoolers there as well on, on that site. So I, I'm kind of thinking now that you can find these from homeschooling magazines, stuff like that. My four year old boy asks to play the ODS kids volume almost every day. He's learned so much and I'm amazed. Your entertaining graphics and characters are a hit. It seems that we are constantly bombarded with sales material on the web and with the amount of junk that we are forced fed. Since my exposure to your company, it was first made through the traditional mail service. I gladly opened up your advertisement. Because there were a few people that were sent letters, there were a few people that uh, were looking for catalogs to uh, specific ODS things, but I guess ODS didn't have like their own catalog. I think that they were a part of another catalog and that's how people order them. I'm raising my 10 year old granddaughter alone and on a tight budget. I am happy to say that you've helped me provide her with quality fun learning tools that she enjoys. I like being able to surprise her with a new game from time to time without being thrown off budget. A foster adoptive family that has four adoptive kids right now. Two foster kids just went home. They are all special needs and range from ages 6 through 13. They just love these kids games and do not even realize they are learning at the same time. We were so impressed with you that we made copies of the order form. And it was really funny. Somebody actually copied the order form and gave it to their friends. And I think that's really interesting. If you have somebody advertising for you and they're not getting paid whatsoever, I think that really shows the power of what they were doing. I think that they were doing something really good and I think people were really appreciating that. So they are like, hey, I wanna hook other people on this because I think this is really good. I would like to take a few minutes to tell you I'm grateful for a company like you and children learn a great deal. It's fun and the prices are great. I have four children. Their ages are 14, 19, and th twins are five. They love your software. I'm glad I was mailed a letter from your company a while ago and very glad I purchased your products. Thanks and keep up the great work. Please keep me on your email with special offers. I really appreciate your company. I think it was really interesting how most of the customer testimonials or either moms or teachers, which makes a lot of sense. And 
I think that's probably where people found it. So, so far, I mean, at the top of their website, it says that they are don't influence their customer testimonials, especially like with the, what they think of the company. And I think that's interesting. Um, but so far, it looks like that there has really been no reason to cover up anything. So I think the company so far has been genuine and I think the company is genuinely trying to help people and it really shows through their reviews. And that's the one thing it's like, if you on the outside show that you're a good company, but your reviews are terrible, something's not right. Cause the customer most of the time isn't going to lie for the sake of the company, unless they're working for the company and they sign like an NDA or something that would make sense. But people who aren't working there, yeah, they're not good. They're going to be honest. All right. They're not going to, most of the time, they're not going to lead other people on. Personally, I don't think the customer, huh? the customer testimonials are fake. Like I was a bit skeptical, obviously, cause I don't want to be like, Oh, I believe everything everybody says, but, um, I think the customer testimonials are real. Uh, especially for a company like that. I don't know why they would fake it. Like there's no reason to, there's barely any negative reception. So it makes no sense why they would fake it. Honestly, looking over the customer testimonials again with fresh eyes, there's two things that I notice. One, there are no dates set for who made the reviews, right? Yet in the game reviews, you have the ratings, you have the review date, you have who it was reviewed by. So why is the review set like this but when you go to the customer testimonials it's just an just a name like why is that that's a little suspicious so i think that's kind of a little suspicious i'm not sure why it's like that so that's a bit weird but that's really the only um criticism that i have with that specifically again one question leads to another which leads to another which leads to another and then you want to find out more and more about something probably one of the reasons that i really like ods as an as an archive they made like children's educational games back right. then like cd-roms okay and when cd-roms just started coming out yeah like this was after like, like tape like after texas instruments i don't like, know because well, we used to, I used to play video games and make like programs on texas instrument on video on uh vhs not vhs but uh cassette tapes mm. yeah okay. that's interesting. so that's pre cd-rom obviously well, I know floppy disk was before CD. Right, right. and then before sure. that was the cassette tapes. Yeah. Punch cards before that. It seems like that there's only like a set group of people that know about it, and it's it's kind of like faded away. Right. Compared was, to like other. Was it a were they nationally yeah. known? Was it like through like educational programs they, that they were distributed, or was it? Well, the thing is, like the founder had so many connections that like he actually helped like schools and hospitals with like free software. It's no, it's national. Nationally, like, okay. Yeah. No, is this like a, are these like math games? Like yeah, they're like educational, games. like math, Geographical spelling, games. Yeah, all, geography. Of, all different kinds. Yeah. Right? Okay, that's pretty cool. And they're now, what happened to them? They, so because of the medium that they were, which was CD-ROMs, nobody right. uses CD-ROMs anymore, so they kind right. of just fell off because they didn't go digital. Like, I haven't found anybody that like knows about this. Yeah. Because it's a very like unknown thing, because it's kind of been buried for literal decades. Yeah, it's the 80s. So 80s and 90s. 80s. I was born in 75, so 10, I was in like fourth, fifth grade, and I was in New York and then Florida around that time. I don't remember any of those, those games. Hmm. We didn't really do educational video games, yeah. though. It was, I guess that was before my time. Just doing the, yeah. the first computers that I got into really were like simple programming in high school. And the first computer we had was a Texas instrument. Like I said, we used to make, I used to program like a worm and different graphics oh. um, on a Texas instrument and then save it on a literal cassette tape. Hmm. Yeah, and then I got, I did 3D drafting like when I was older. So. All right, it was good talking to you guys though. Good talking yeah. to you. I gotta take off. That was the weirdest thing ever. Yeah. It was nice though. at me. I was hoping to meet people today. Yeah, just dude, that him. was so impromptu. But that was not planned what? at was all. Good. That guy's really chill. Yeah. So yeah, I guess the general public basically doesn't know anything about it, which is uh. This totally adds something to the documentary. It really does, dude. Honestly, like, was not expecting that. You're gonna hold the I camera now. I was trying now, to or? figure out the aperture. But yeah. We hit. So I guess if you know uh, anybody in your life, ask them. Do you know who what Ohio Distinctive Software is? Bet you they're gonna say no. There's like a 99 or 98% chance there will be no. Also, apparently that monitor is uh, expensive. 
At this point, I've really talked to everybody that I feel that I can reach in the sense of physical and personal connections. I feel like at this point, I really need to dive into more internet and online connections, which is gonna be interesting because I have no clue where I'm gonna find these people, but I will, and <laughs> it's gonna be interesting. It's, um, it's gonna be interesting. Ohio Distinctive Software is something that like nobody knows about, which is really interesting because if you go into Google, there are over 3 million Google searches on this very thing. But when I think about it, it's like, I don't know anybody outside of my family that knows about it. But like <laughs> nobody remembers Ohio Distinctive Software from what I've realized. Yeah. And maybe I just haven't looked too hard yet because there are plenty of internet archive stuff on the internet of like clips from the games but like if i ask somebody do you know what ohio distinctive software is they're gonna say no like a hundred percent of the time only me and my brother really have experienced it firsthand and past that point it's become an enigma to everybody else which doesn't make a lot of sense because there are so many archived clips and pictures on the internet where if the internet wasn't a thing I feel like everybody would forget about it, which is why the internet is an incredible place where you can find all of these things and you can feel like you know something because you're seeing other people having the same experiences. I don't know, it's just interesting to me. Cause like, there are some things on the internet that haven't been searched ever and there are some things that like, are barely searched, but like, if something has three million searches, like that's not normal. Um, and I am aware that not all the searches are the exact thing and that they're related searches, but still that's a pretty high number You know, so it's like I don't know It's interesting. I found the triple B review there was a complaint there So that was a pretty spicy thing to find somebody that had something bad to say about the company for once There were only three reviews on their Facebook page There was two that were just like five stars and there was one actual like written review which was really weird it seemed really scatterbrained so i don't know how i feel about that that was a customer review that obviously wasn't influenced by anybody so i was right they made more than a million dollars they made 2.87 million according to dun and brad street which is a site i've never heard before so i don't know how trusted that site is i know triple b is better for that i mean apparently they've worked with other companies i guess they have a good reputation but i've never heard of them so take that as you will but that's something what's really interesting is that there was somebody on reddit that was like hey there's this weird game that i can't remember can somebody help me and of course the person said it was ohio distinctive software so that was really cool to see something on reddit about this because i i actually i don't know if ohio distinctive software has has its own reddit but past that point that's kind of it regarding Ohio's distinctive software specifically, regarding that name. We're talking about the good old internet. Oh boy. So the internet is Okay, very... Nakey Jakey. Right? No, I know, right? <laughs> that person is staring over here. There's not a lot on the <laughs> Perfect. There's not a lot uh, on the internet about this, right? And that's very interesting because this is from the 80s, 90s type deal. So, um, yeah, this, this didn't really help us much now, did it? <laughs> Not really. Um, the thing with ODS is they are very much archived on discs that you can still buy, obviously. But regarding like actual online stuff, there's pictures and videos. That's really about it. Um, few reviews, not, not a lot to go off of. So this guy didn't freaking help at all. Thanks, dude. <laughs> that means that we're gonna have to get a lot more info with the actual team and the founder. I gotta figure out who in the world the team is. That's gonna be hard to track them down, but I think I have my ways. So something interesting happened the last three days. I tried to contact seven different people through Facebook by means of literally typing oh, how to sync software into the search and trying to find people based on like their career set on Facebook. Found about seven people, nobody responded. Fair, I'm a nobody to them, I understand. 
what I realized is that I could comment on some people's posts, not all of them because they have it set to private or whatever, but the post that I could comment on was like a few of them. The one I didn't post or comment on was some political account, which I didn't want to comment on that because I knew the person would retaliate and be like, wow, you don't care about this issue. So it's like I didn't even want to mess with that. But there was one that was posting recently, which made me think that they were very active on Facebook. I left them a comment on one of their posts, a neutral post, you know, on some meme or whatever. And they're still posting, and I got no response, got no DMs back. And so I was like, oh, okay. I was going to wait a week initially, but I was like, okay, I'm getting impatient. It's Friday. I messaged them Tuesday. And I was like, oh, I'll just wait till the weekends because people check Facebook on weekends. Um, but I was getting impatient. So I'm like, okay, I want to do something else here to make this somewhat productive. So I tried to, because I remember that there were emails on their website. There was like six different emails. And so I was like, oh, I'll just go to their website and I am going to just look for their emails, email all of the possible emails that I can find. And guess what? It's gone. It's gone. What? So look here. So we have this, right? Temporarily closed. Okay, they updated their site. Like legit. So this is their store. They legit just got rid of their website. They legit just got rid of their website. But this is the store. Where's the actual site that we were just looking at? It's not here. It's gone. Like it's just, it's gone. Like I don't understand. All right, I'll have to sync software. Bam. So we click this, right? Run this site. Company website. Boom. It's the store. Okay. What about this? We've been to this site before. It's the store. Okay. What in the world? Okay. Uh, this one. Wholesale software. It's the store. Four four came now. I know for a fact that this was on the actual website. Boom. Goes back to the store. Where's the website? The website's gone. The website is gone. All it is is the store now. What happened to the old website? It's gone. Like you can't find it anymore. This is not the original website. This is an updated version. You literally have evidence of the actual website. Yeah, this website's gone. These two are not the same. Website, store. They've gotten rid of this. Why? Thank goodness I recorded evidence. See, this is the website, right? This is the website. Okay, this is the new website. These are not the same. This is the store. They got rid of their website. Like, we already went over all of this and they nuked their site. Here's the store, right? These are two different things now, right? They nuked their store, they got rid of it, and they revamped it, but now the actual site's gone, the store's there. But why, why would they just get rid of their website? This doesn't make sense. All I was trying to do was find the emails of who to contact, but then when I go to the website, we get we get this garbage, which isn't even a site, it's all it is is a store which you still can't order from. So this website is no longer available. That's weird. Because I contacted, I tried to contact seven different people and literally within three days, the website is gone. What's going on here? I'm so confused. I don't understand. See, all this information just gone. It's gone, dude. It's gone. That's a little too close. You know what I mean? It's a little too much of a convenience. I'm not gonna lie. It makes sense now why they're, um, copyright was 2016 if they're just gonna bomb the website but why do it when I start messaging the actual team here's the deal there's a very specific situation that happened right where it's like only I have evidence of this specific thing which I was blown away of if I was not doing this documentary I would have been lost to time so good thing I've been working on this for an entire year right buddy yeah but um, edit text on the screen no I'm not going like, to beep, see the thing is at first I only thought that I had evidence, but apparently online, another person from years ago thought it would be a good idea to record some of the online games, and because the online games are no longer accessible on the website because they took it down, she did a great job in documenting that for me. So thank you, Amanda. That's cool. Um, I also pointed out the existence of the games because they were faint memories of mine, and then I did some research on said video of the game. True. Team, I don't know. Maybe they signed an NDA and they can't talk about it, which is fair, but at least let me know instead of just not answering me. Then again, I'm a nobody to them, and that's fair, and I understand that for sure. But I also 
came across as very respectful in my messages and everything, no responses. I'm gonna still wait for the response because it's only been three days. I'm gonna wait at least a week before I can be like, okay, we're done waiting. But, oh my gosh, dude, that website. Now they've revamped their store. I'm not gonna look at it again because it's the same exact kind of concept. They have their products on their site. Nothing was added or removed, I believe. It's just the, they added more categories and the store is still closed. That's really the only differences. So I was like, no way, dude, what? When I noticed that they completely nuked their site and only I have evidence that they did. <laughs> Only I have evidence that they did. And I think that's really funny. I think that's interesting. Because now I have a bunch of information that nobody else has. Literally because the site is no longer available. Either that or they're just making a new site or updating it. I don't know. But right now, it's dead. So, um, that was a little too convenient. I'm not going to lie. All I was trying to do was find emails and then email that because there was like six different emails. Now I'm going to have to check through the footage to see if I can find these emails to email the team. So far there are five emails. There's solutions, bulk orders, special support, help desk. Solutions and bulk orders are dead because I got an email saying that they were. Your message couldn't be sent to bulk orders and solutions, could not be delivered. Obviously if their website just got updated, somebody's working somewhere. Whether that's the founder or other people, I don't know yet, but it's like, <sighs> things are getting a little weird right now. Things are weird, but that's fine. Within like a week, a week or two of me like actually looking over it, it's gone now, which is crazy. Because if I didn't record it, oh my gosh, dude, I would have no evidence. So since I wasn't getting any responses from any of the individual people, I decided to message the actual Facebook page and they actually saw my message 20 minutes ago and they left me on red. <laughs> so uh, that's where I'm at right now. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's nice that the founder responded and I wanted to get his perspective eventually, but I didn't want to get his perspective right away, which is fine. But um, yeah, I guess this is where we're going. Cause like that, I want to get his perspective cause there's a lot of questions that I can't find answers to. At least I haven't found them yet. So now at least we have contact with the founder, which is nice. I do appreciate that for sure. I'm still gonna try to get into contact with the actual team though, at least one team member. I'm still gonna have to call. I, I, I'm really anxious right now because it's like, I, I still need to call the studio directly and be like, yo, what's going on here? In a sense of like, hey, so I'm making an independent um, documentary about Ohio software. Is there anybody on the team that I could interview to be part of an objective documentary? I'm not kidding you. I felt anxiety when I saw that phone number because it means that I can call them unless they're out of business and they just have left the phone number up and never updated it, which companies are bad at updating their website and their Google stats, whatever. So I'm going to call that number and we're going to figure out if that number is actually Ohio Distinctive Software or not. And if it is, I have some questions. But I don't even know if that phone number is like real or not in the sense of, I don't know if they're still working there. So after whining about how anxious I was, I finally called the company and this is what happened. of Ohio Distinctive. We are temporarily unavailable to provide phone support, but if you'd like to contact us, please send an email to helpdesk at ohioD.com. That's helpdesk at Ohio D as in David dot com. Thank you. Have a good day. So after I thought I wasn't gonna get a response, there was one person, Chip, in particular employee wise that I think is interesting because messaged his current company that he's working at and he agreed to an interview and we actually got to talking a little bit and what was said was some pretty good informational stuff and he liked the idea so much that now I'm in a group with another employee of his so far. Now I have three people that I am in contact with currently 
We have the founder, we have Chip, and we have Susan. I think that's gonna be very good. See, a year later, I've barely talked to any of the members and I'm kind of upset about that because I feel like I should have at least interviewed one of them, but all I got were some DMs. And part of me wants to go back legit and try to get some more interviews from the team. And maybe I will, maybe I won't. I'm in the future, I don't know. But if I do, hopefully that company will still be good on the outside as it is on the inside, basically. But from what I'm seeing from the outside, it looks fine. I just wish that I would have personally had more contact with the team because there was really only one to two team members that ever hit me back, which is fair enough. Uh, obviously, like besides the founder, which was nice. Um, but yeah, no, I think the team did a great job with the games that they produced and I appreciate them for that because we grew up on it and I very much appreciate all the hard work that they put in. And I'm saying this because I genuinely believe the company's good from the year's worth of research that I've done. They seem like a decently good company and not a lot of people have bad things to say about it, which is either really good or really bad. And I think for now it's really good. The other thing that kind of happened was I was in contact with the founder and I initially wanted to do a video interview uh, but from what it looks like, he doesn't want to do a video interview, which is fair, I guess. But I wanted to do a video interview with him, but I guess that's not going to happen. So instead, I just sent him the questions and I finally got a response back literally five minutes ago. I want to know his story. I want to know where he came from. I want to know everything about him. I want to know everything about his game company. I want to know everything about all of his connections he has in that gaming world, because it's like nobody, not everybody makes a million dollars. That's a small percentage of people. Not everyone's going to make a million dollars in their life. Have you ever wondered about the owner of ODS? That's actually the one thing I've never considered, but now that you mention it, I when when you say it, I start to think about it, but beforehand, no. It's interesting. When, when you're a kid, you're just focused on the game. You're not focused on the person who made the game. Like, when you're a kid and you're watching cartoons, you hear the voice, it's like, Oh, that's the voice of Spongebob, or whatever. Like, like later when you realize, oh, that's actually a voice actor in real life called Tom Kenny, or something. That's, it's, it's, it, it makes that a little more special, but since I don't know anything about the creator of ODS, it just makes it that much more interesting and that much more special. I can live without knowing, and it kind of adds to the mystery of the of the series. If I died and I ever knew, I'd just be like, ah, oh, whatever. If I did know, I would just be like, oh, cool. I don't know. I don't know if I told you this, but he, he actually set the world record for fastest pull-ups in like a minute or something. That's crazy. So if he can do that, and he also makes a successful for its time gaming company, there's more to him. There's gotta be. Hmm which I think is interesting. So in my mind, it's like, if he can do that, there's gotta be more to this guy. How did you discover that of all things? Well, the name is like Stan Aplesoft or something like that. And so I looked him up and like, that was like one of the first things that popped up. Aplesoft software. Stan Aplesoft. I think I could be saying that wrong, but it's like, his name's Stan. Uh, or at least that's what the website says. Stan the man. There's probably a lot going on that we just don't know because he doesn't make it public. Or whatever so i've been in contact with the founder since a day ago we've been emailing back and forth email me your questions and i said would it be possible for us to do a video interview via the internet if not then i can just send you the questions he said let's start with you just sending me your questions so that disappointed me a little bit wanted to build a business that would contribute something meaningful to society and i like the idea of working for myself originally my idea was for diet slash nutrition software and my first products were executive diet helper, menu planner, weight loss planner, and food label analyzer. I designed the products and my twin brother Glenn did all the programming. Next we made ODS Health Watch and ODS Money Saver. After that I came up with the idea to make children's educational games. I liked the idea because it seemed limitless and I saw no reason why kids couldn't learn while having fun. So there were several educational kids game companies before RDS. Most of them got consolidated into one large company that was sold to Mattel. Okay, that makes sense. What was your mindset with ODS? I wanted to do something meaningful. Connections mostly came about from other businesses contacting me. Started with a relationship with World Book Encyclopedia and then my contact got hired away by Britannica. For years, I created email marketing campaigns for Britannica selling their products and mine to their customers. They would send out the emails 
and I would process the orders and do product fulfillment. At first, I sold only products that were created in-house, but eventually I started losing money because of the time and cost created those products. So I started licensing products from other companies. I started with World Book, then Britannica, and then lots of other companies came knocking on my door. I'm in the process of switching hosting and revamping the website. I guess that fell through the cracks. I'm asking the guy who's working on the website if he can resurrect that. When I started the business back in 1987, I sold our products through direct mail. I would send out a one-page letter offering a nutrition software program for $5. In those days, diet slash nutrition software programs typically sold for hundreds of dollars, so people were eager to see what they could get for five. I eventually sent out many millions of these direct email offers. That's how I ended up with so many customers. After we created the next two nutrition software programs, I bundled all three together and sold the bundle for $10. By that time, we began making children's educational games. We already have a huge database of customers. Our customer reviews were from letters sent to us by happy customers. We never asked for any reviews, but we are always really pleased when anyone would make the offer to say thank you. Closed down early in the pandemic and we haven't yet opened again. I'm taking my time reopening and using the time to change the web hosting and simplify my business. Yes, we're still located in address. It's a two-story building and a few years ago we no longer needed so much space. I leased out the first floor of the building so we operate out of the second floor now. Our business has been shrinking for several years now, but we're out still alive. I expect that eventually no one will be purchasing software on discs, so I guess our days are numbered. However, my plan is to keep the website open with free online products even after we quit selling anything. Right now, we have a free set of online games at ODS Games, and one of my priorities with the new website is to add a big button slash link to the Ohio Distinctive Software homepage to access that. In addition to running what's left of ODS, I'm involved with my twin brother's business. Glenn is a medical doctor and he runs a phase one clinical trial unit to help pharmaceutical companies develop new medications. What are some of your passions? I do wildlife photography. All the wildlife t-shirts that I sell from Ohio Distinctive website are made from photos that I took. The other thing is like he has a passion for photography, which I think was very obvious with the photo of the day and the photo competition with Britannica. I think that made it obvious for sure that he has a passion for photography. So that made a lot of sense. What percentage of the profits have you personally gotten from ODS? My twin brother and I own the company. I'm the majority owner. In good times, I shared the wealth with all employees, but unfortunately the best years are behind us. So there are a lot of reasons why this needed to happen. There are a lot of reasons why it's important to look at something that not a lot of people know about generally oh boy the founder stan the man himself see he's an interesting guy very interesting guy he's very much into weightlifting you know he set a world record for pull-ups very cool guy but the problem is there's like barely anything on him on the internet apparently he has connections to like an artist that's extremely popular so he's either friends with him or something he's made some books that you can order he's made merch you know he's made shirts mugs everything like that and yet there's not a lot about him. I was debating on, you know, buying his book, but I don't think it really matters that much because it's a fictional book. It's not like an audio, autobiographical book. I can't speak. Audio bi audio biography. biographical. Otherwise I would have bought it, but it's a fiction. I don't really think that pertains to him so much. He's a very, he keeps to himself and I respect that. Um, but it also makes me very, um curious as to why he's so to himself you know that's something i didn't ask him i should have asked you stan i'm sorry i don't know i spoke to the founder once through email he seems pretty decent um i was surprised that he went into detail with the questions that i asked him other uh, to be honest there were a few questions that i'm like okay he's kind of dodging the question a little bit but he also gave a lot of information in those questions so i'm like i don't know i think he's a decent guy i don't think there's anything mischievous or anything honestly it's also really important to question what you originally thought when you were younger because there are some things that you think when you're younger and you just believe them or think them because that's how you grew up but it's like there comes a point in time where you really have to question why and i'm questioning why why were the games in my household in the first place do they provide value would this world be better without them? You don't remember them for a long time, but then you like, one day you remember a portion of it. And then you try to like dig around and find whatever you can. And then you just find the game in question, which is like, wow, I wasn't hallucinating. Well, I, this is a real thing, which leads to more questions like, 
what happened to this series, or how much does this disc cost today? Oh, how to stick the software. Oh yeah, what are those? Which Menu are those? planner. Meanwhile, I finally unboxed all of the uh, CDs, the CD games, and it was very nostalgic for me. I'm not gonna lie, it was, it was good. It was a very good time. Yeah, obviously it was like brother bonding time. I now <laughs> have to try all the games. And what's interesting is that not all of the games are on the CD, right? I got 90% of the, 95% of the CD games. There's a few of them that are like online. Find those games, cause I tried my hardest to get every single game on CD, but it just wasn't possible. I got most of them though. Here. Yeah. You have this one menu this planner is the right game. there. So now I have to go through each individual game, which is gonna take a very long time. And I'm now realizing that we're probably already at like the two hour mark at this point, <laughs> which is interesting because um, I still have that whole thing to go through, which I know that's gonna take a very long time. So that'll be interesting. But it's crazy how I started this project like eight months ago. And I think it'll be an entire year before this project gets done. I'm pretty sure. I just think it's interesting that nobody else has really like made a video about this or just a documentary or just any sort of media about it except like reviews about it on their website. So it's like, it, it, it feels good to be like one of the first people to really dive deep into this topic specifically because I think it brings up a lot of questions and it's a very, it's a very investigative topic. Now it's time to play all every single game the order of operations right now is looking at the games that i am familiar with and then going to the games that i have no clue what they are and then going to the browser games or the games that i can find only online because i know there's a few of them so now it's time to start investigating are there any specific phrases from the games that you remember like clearly like one motto or one like word uh possibly uh, in one of the games in the video we found, uh, the, little, the little mascot says, if you need help, just click on me. And in the one that I couldn't, and in the one game that I don't remember, I don't know what it's called. It, it might be map quest, I'm not sure. Little fairy said something like, like I remember like the fairy would say something like, find the first word that begins the letter and then insert letter here. And then when you get it right or whatever, the characters, uh, the, the mascot that you play as is like, it says something like, um, wow, I'm glad I got that one right, or wow, that was a really cool question, or some, or some crap, or I know the opening intro of, of possibly Map Quest. I'm not sure. Oh no, wait, Map Quest is what was the one with the plane. You go around and find keys. Let's just call the game in question that I can't remember. Question quiz, or uh, question quest, or something. So in question quest, you wake up under a tree because of the fairy. The fairy takes you to the Castle intro plays and then you're in the middle of a town which allows you to go into like a building for um uh, what's the term that's like oh yeah character bio for like all the characters you meet in the game castle has the king in it the one place has the uh has all the rooms and stuff i remember at one point not being able to go on with the game because i had to do something first but i didn't know what ha what, what i had to do Anything else you want me to ask? Well, ask it me? was like, I was asking for a phrase like a one word, two word thing. Because. Well, I gave you that. The if you need help, just click on me thing. Mm -hmm. You want to know the word that I thought of? What? Super duper. Yep. Or radical or awesome. But like, that's the one phrase in my mind. Oh. That like is so clear. And like, I know the tone. I know the robotic like voice. Yeah. And like, that's. There was also the one game with the. Uh... Uh, safari guy and the chicken and I remember him remember some someone saying we really need your help or some or something This is the one from our childhood. You gotta or... put it closer. There you go. It's, uh, Egbert professor Egbert's uh, Egbert's discovery. I remember one of the quotes in the game is they really need your help and True. then one of them nods If this looks freaky, I do not blame you. Right. So I looked through the games to make sure that they work and what I found was that out of like the 30 games, I believe, five of them didn't work. One of them was one I knew about, and then the other ones were ones I have never played ever before. So now we're dealing with games that I've played in the past and figuring out how they hold up 
to what I remember. And we have games that I've never played before, so fresh eyes on that. Either the ones that don't work will be forever lost to time, or I will figure out some sort of solution. And then this one is another one from our childhood, the Four-Eyed Alien. The Four-Eyed, oh, that's a classic one too. That was, um. see, I haven't played these games in so long, so I'm trying to remember. I was disappointed in some areas, but generally it was definitely a good experience. And I think a lot of the games held up in several ways that I was not expecting. Although there were some that I was kind of shocked at how terrible they were. Oh boy, the games. There is so much to talk about the games, right? The games are so interesting and there's so much to it. And my arms are so freaking tired. Uh, but, wow, do they hold up, do they don't? I know the answer, you don't, let's find out. The first one I played was this one specifically, Quadrarian Keyword Find. This one was pretty eh for me, I'll be honest. Uh, I know I played it originally and I think I got bored of it and then I stopped and there's probably a few reasons why I uh, just didn't play it uh, when I was younger, or at least not a lot. I think it's actually one of my least favorites out of the ones that I remember playing. Way too simple, that's all the game was, and there were several like modes, but they really weren't that different from each other. I think to be fair, that you can set like different levels on the game, and I only tried like level one. So I don't know how intense the leveling system is specifically, but generally, even if it was harder, I think overall, I wasn't too impressed with it. I don't think it held up as much as I wanted it to. I was pretty indifferent. I was like in the middle on it. I don't think it was good, but it wasn't really like that bad of an experience, I'll say. Like it's a language game. You have to try to guess the right letter. You know, that's the thing that first graders at max will, you know, learn how to do kindergarten even, but like it wasn't too complicated so i don't know i was pretty i was pretty eh about it if i'm honest y'all odious air explorer find the key next one i did was air explorer this one specifically awesome so it's basically like geo guesser except you know you don't need the internet so that's cool it's like a single player geo guesser uh one of the first i assume because this is from like the 90s i i don't know if it's just nostalgia but this game kind of holds up it's uh, it's merciful with its chances. The gameplay is kind of basic. This one does its job right. This one this one actually makes you think. I know that's one I played a lot. You just basically guess uh, which state is the state that's listed, basically. And even though I am an adult, I still found it to be very fun because I'm not that great at geography. So the fact that I was able to get enjoyment out of a educational game from the 90s I think was a very good sign. I, I love the graphics. I, I think it still holds up to this day in some ways. I think it's still enjoyable and it can be enjoyed specifically to this day. This is oh, a, oh, oh, another this another one. childhood classic. Yeah, this one Here it is, is one where you have to like, I think guess the right word or something, right? I'm trying to remember gameplay, but like it's been so long. The music is like slightly burned into my head. Yeah. I just love like the box art and like the games in general. Scholarly Sea Adventure. This one, I love purely from the aspect of the voice acting in the game. The voice acting is really good. And what's really cool is like, if you get a question right, then like a little sea shanty will play and then the pirate will talk for a little bit and then you'll go back to the next question. We swear on Davy Jones' locker. We, we don't, don't have a mate that's smarter. And I think the sea shanties are a very good speck of personality with the game because there's no other game like it, I think. It's basically just like pattern recognition in a way. That's kind of like the gameplay. You kind of have to compare phrases and patterns to other patterns to see if they are similar in some way regarding either like count or just like similarities in general. I remember being creeped out by this one as a kid for some reason. I don't know if it's the low quality character or the unsettling music. I mean, this one sits... I guess it depends on what mini game in this one you are playing. But I can imagine for like some older kid, this might be kind of easy. Despite its creepy graphics, this one's, this one's okay. But I think it's awesome. I think it's one of the better games of the bunch. The animation specifically is a bit janky and the lip 
movement lip syncing in the game is just not good at all. <laughs> like they didn't really even try. But I think the strengths of ODS games are the looping animations. I think the looping animations in any ODS game is good in general, depending on the game, but I think generally it's good. But lip syncing in general is not their strength and I don't really think they tried to. So besides that, I think it was an enjoyable, fun, educational pirate game, Carnival Math. Carnival Math is pretty simple, really. It is one of the most simple concepts ever. You have to answer a question correctly five times in order for this guy right here, right? And then the guy gets dunked in the water. It's not a very difficult game to grasp, honestly. And I think it's like an infinite game where you kind of just quit when you want to quit. There's no real end in sight, I think. The carnival game, it's uh... The carnival game? <laughs> That's not the name. I don't rem ODS carnival, whatever. Like, it's kind of just stupid fun. Especially if you're a kid who likes to see someone fall in. It's the equivalent of your dad doing something silly and you're giggling as a kid. That's this game. So I think it's a pretty good game in general. It's not awesome, it's not bad, but it's a decent game. It's a fun little game to play. Amazing Art Corner. I honestly thought this was going to be like a Microsoft Paint ripoff, and it wasn't. It was really weird because it's got this really surreal, trippy art technique to it by the sense of you literally like create patterns with like colored balls and like you can color them differently and then you can have either like two repeat or like four repeat at the same time. You can make these really obscure designs. The opening for this one feels like one of those computer uh, screens that play when you're in act when your uh, computer is inactive to like keep the screen from uh, freezing up or burning an image onto the screen. This one seems kind of basic. Not nothing, to, nothing, uh, nothing to sneeze at. MS Paint has more features, sure, but I can see a kid having fun with this. And the tools are like the balls specifically, and like that's like your paintbrush. And there's also a setting where you can do it automatically and then you can change the colors while it's doing it automatically. So you create this like weird automatic painting. It's a good, simple concept of a game. It's nothing mind blowing and it's nothing like super detailed, but it's a fun little game to just like pass the time. There's really nothing educational about it except I guess learning colors, but it's not really learning. It's more about just like creating which I was really drawn to in general. So overall, it's it's a good game. Not bad, not awesome, but it's, it's a decent game. It's a simple, decent game. Edgar's Language Exploration. This is the worst game out of all of the ones that I remember. The graphics, the UI. Bad mascot, good music, decent gameplay. <laughs> That's it? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> that's fine. Literally everything about it is terrible. It's not good. The owl does not look like this owl whatsoever. The owl looks like a weird, surreal, acid trippy nightmare fuel. It's bad. I don't understand why it's so bad, but to me, I kind of can't stand it. I barely was able to play it because I just couldn't stand how ugly everything looked. The gameplay wasn't even that fun, honestly. So there was really nothing unique about it. It was just another, you know, language game. I think what kind of turned off for me is that it's a language game by the sense of you learning another language quite literally. And I don't know any languages besides English. So besides that, it wasn't that enjoyable for me personally but if you want to learn a language if i wanted to learn french because that's the mode i choose if i wanted to learn french sure i'd boot up that game i guess to test my common knowledge on french but i'm not going to learn french so don't really see that uh, in my future ods robot challenge this one is awesome i love this i loved the robot i love that blit is in it blit is like the main character like mascot of ODS, that's Blit. We mentioned that earlier. This game is actually the one that helped me rediscover Ohio Distinctive Software. Because I found it, I found the discs downstairs and then I did some research. I asked Ethan that maybe he could do some research too or something. Then I found someone online with sort of an old archive game channel 
play this game and i was and i had and i just had to show ethan immediately i knew that i'd be i knew that i'd come one step closer to like digging up this to digging up something he and i and again our dad kind of kind of remember this game the game itself is uh pretty decent and stuff i think there's a mode in that that allows you to like play it as a matching game where you have to flip over tiles and you have to like reveal stuff this game kind of feels like an adventure in the sense that you start off weak but then it gets more difficult as it progresses it's pattern recognition it's like a match two match three type game where you match certain colors and shapes and styles together there's even one round where there's like very obscure shapes that you try to match and it's a little trippy at times and the more you go the more it, it increasingly gets difficult plus super duper that's uh a very common phrase in my mind when i think of ods specifically and it's from ods robot challenge which is funny because this is like the only game you can find footage for on the internet it was just really cool to see all of the games in front of me because i haven't seen these games since i was like six or something so it's just really cool to like open them all up because they're right there on my dresser right now all of them and it's really weird to see them just right there in front of me because we only had a few of them here and there but to see most of them like 95 percent of the games just sitting right there is very interesting to me and i really appreciate it and i think it's really cool to see it in person for sure definitely i don't know it was a very surreal experience and i very much appreciated the whole thing in general it's just so weird seeing all of them because I thought that there were only like a few games, but I think there's like 60 to 70. I'm not 100% sure, but there's there's a lot more games than I previously thought. So it was just really interesting to see it in person for sure. And we tested it out and they are playable. Like I have a Windows 10 computer currently and these games were made back when like Windows 95 was a thing and even before then these games came out in the 90s i believe 80s or 90s so yeah it's just been it was a very surreal experience to load up one of the games and to see it we played it for about five minutes just to see if it would work and it did it didn't crash or anything the graphics actually kind of held up which was very interesting to me uh that's something i wasn't expecting i was expecting for it to look terrible but in a weird way, the graphics and just the art style was still very charming to me. And I think that's something that still holds up to this day, which is very interesting in general to do from that perspective, generally, without looking at it deeper than that currently. I think it's got a pretty good chance to hold up after all these years, but we still got to put it to the test, quite honestly. So Spell Dragon and the Knight of Mount Brainer is... Again, it feels kind of easy, especially if you know both languages that it offers you. Spell the word, English, English word. In Spanish, English word is the answer. And it's like, I can kind of see the appeal again, since these are for made, made for little kids. But, <laughs> but if you're, but if you speak Spanish, you got an unfair advantage. And I feel like that's a game you can play at any age because like, with language games specifically in regards to like learning a different language you can play like this one and actually learn words i learned that cow means lime that's a thing i learned today the fact that it kind of puts you on a timer is a little ner uh, a little uh, nerve-wracking especially if you're a kid who doesn't understand the concept of time yet which is something that i haven't seen from any ohio to secret software game yet so if there was a game about time then i don't know we might have something there it's okay. The fact that it allows you to choose your characters is, is unique for an Ohio State software game. Instead of it just being, you're the main character. This one's just like, you get to choose which character you play as in this game. It's, 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 an, it's, a, nice, it's a nice approach. It's a nice, uh, it's a nice opening welcome. Uh, circus uh, thing. Uh, yes, circus thing. The Mathtastic Game Show. This one's creepy. Uh, just, that's it. <laughs> this yeah, that's creepy. it. Just use the <laughs> just use just use the clip that I used earlier with the other game. That doesn't help me. The anything. game that says the game that says oh, I'll be your Sydney time. That was one of the worst ones we've seen in a while. They're super obnoxious and super annoying, and I can't I can turn off the music. The music itself was also annoying. 
if I could play with no sound, that makes the game somehow better, which is sad. Compared to the other ones, it's not a good representation of those kinds of games. I mean, I guess this has the elements of being able to increase your dis difficulty, but it doesn't really tell you like how to do certain stuff. Because you were struggling with it, weren't you, Ethan? I think so, yeah. Yeah, so like, if you were struggling to like figure out what to do, how is a kid supposed to be able to do it? Not to mention that gaze. Her movements are just like smooth when you hear the swoosh, swoosh, swoosh. But then it's like a uh, stop motion when it's just normal. That's kind of unnerving, don't you think? Yeah, it's kind of jarring. Uh, but yeah, Painter Bear. This one is the easiest on the eyes, but it's too much. It gives you like, this This game is so extensive. There's, there's like so many things to learn about when it comes to Spanish. It's like, Jeez, this could take up a semester of my school. <laughs> I liked that one. It's not the best one, but I think it's a pretty intermediate one where it's like, it's adorable, you know? Game about uh, learning languages. If we're going with learning languages, I would pick this one over the OWL one. The OWL one is garbage compared to this one. This is the supreme language learning game if you want to learn a foreign language language bear specifically is what i would go with not the creepy owl one the creepy owl one is bad but that one was good that one was actually good especially education wise like i didn't know any of the answers because i don't know spanish and the funny thing is this is the kind of game that you can let an adult play and learn about spanish i guess the only thing it does wrong is that it doesn't teach you spanish before it gives you questions as if it's like this is rather an exercise to help you remember Spanish, as opposed to just a class. So instead of being given a standardized test in Spanish, maybe you could just do this. Standardized painter bear. <laughs> I will be your teacher, Mr. Painter Bear. It's not amazing or incredible, but you know, it's decent. I'd let my kid play it. I think my kid would enjoy it. It's just like the other playing game, just more polished. What game? I don't remember. Please do not leave that in. I just want... All, all, I, all I wanted was the clip of me just being like, it's exactly like that other game. They use the same map and everything. All that's different is that Blitz got skateboarder gear and it's all polished. It's the same game. It's just odious. Air Explorer. Reskinned. That one was good. It's not awesome. It's just good. I think it's just GeoRunner again. Yeah, this is also GeoRunner. No, um, this is Geo Runner, and then the, the other one is ODS Air Explorer. But it's the same it's, game! It's the same, yeah, no, I know. <laughs> Name of game. Bobolina. In Spanish or English? Uh, it's the same as Spanish. Spanish extravaganza? It's got the highest potential to be a jump scare game. I don't know what it is about that one specifically. I just don't like it. The UI seemed very cluttered. Music was going on the verge of almost being annoying, but not really. Uh, the cow got on the camera multiple times and that was a, it weirded me out for some reason because I wasn't expecting it. I, that shouldn't have been a thing. There were these weird gifts that like, if you hover over it, you know, they would just play gifts of like scenes, scenery for no reason, really. They were kind of just there. I don't know what function they serve necessarily, so it seemed kind of just like a cluttered UI that was unnecessary, honestly. I think there were better, I think that was not as bad as the owl one, but I think it's okay. It's the most nine, I can't talk today. It really is mind numbing if you can't. It is, it is mind numbing. <laughs> it's just like, like some of these games teach the exact same thing, so why do you need to keep making new games that teach the same thing? That's actually a very good point. Get your crap together, ODS. Oh wait, your company's dead. Oh, roast it. I wouldn't play it again. I, I'm eh. I'm eh about it, honestly. Science game. Okay, listen. <laughs> this game has lore. Predator. Okay. This game has to have lore. One of the critters, specifically the white one with the red dot on its head, not dot, but ball. That has to be blit. Think about it. The eyes are the same. The color of the ball is the same as his head. The the ball on the top of his head that's red could be his nose. It came from this game. I I'm calling I'm calling you out, ODS. This game these games have lore. Get on it, Matt Pat. Facts. At Matt Pat, where are you at? Also, the gameplay is a little weird. 
especially the music game. So it seems like whenever they take the time to make like a um, intro cinematic, then the game tends to be way better. So that's a good trend to, to notice. Honestly, I think that's one of the best ones. That one was fun. I'm an adult and I still didn't know uh, most of the answers. It's an all around educational game for sure. So that's a good, just all around trivia game it seems like, which is cool because I feel like all ages can play that. If you want to learn common knowledge, just in general, then there you go. The scariest one so far. Got the footage. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so this one is an eh, because one of the games were pretty creepy because of the sprites, right? And then the other game was actually good, but because the first game was kind of bad. You know, we have a good, we have a bad, so we'll even it out with an eh. Plus, it wasn't the most enjoyable one out of the ones that we've played. The Daily Fundamentals. This one feels like the most bargain bin one out of all of them. Not to mention they made Blit look kawaii, which is weird. I like what Ethan did in it, though. Dear Diary, today I killed a man. His name was Gerald. He had a wife and a family. That's what you get for stealing my Capri son. <laughs> this letter of that he killed a man named Gerald. Because I did. Over the Capri son. That's not a joke, I think. Yeah. What flavor of Capri Sun was it? Light. Fitting. At least you were able to refill your pouch with his blood. <laughs> 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 Dang, that went dark. Okay. Cut it off. That's a joke. I didn't kill a man. Yet. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, cut it off. <laughs> That's what I get. So that one was just like daily challenges. You know, it's like a bunch of games in one, you know, and it has Blit, which is like the mascot of the company. So like, I don't know. It's a cute one. It's like one of those old plug and play games where it's like 5,000 games in one, but it's like eight games in one. Like training your brain with this one because you have math tasks, you have writing tasks, creative writing tasks. Yeah, Rocket Factory. This one feels the most like basic out of all of them so far anyway. That's probably because there's no mascot and it's just... It feels insanely basic. It was very educational, you know, when it comes to space trivia, space knowledge. I feel like everybody could learn a thing or two about space in general. So that was a good one. I actually liked that a lot. That, that was an awesome one. That was one of the better ones. And I also love the music in it specifically as well. The UI was simple and was not cluttered. And I love that about it specifically. That was good. I guess a lot of them that ask simple questions like that are kind of basic it's a lot longer than ods robot challenge but when you compare the two this one is just like the other one except you instead of just picking two and then matching them this one's a little higher quality and it's uh it gives you one to like match to the ones down there which i guess can kind of save space a little different because it starts out as like a matching game right goes into oh you have to basically fill in pieces like a puzzle and it just slowly transitions over time. When you get to the last level, it's very uh, challenging for sure. I was not expecting it to transition into that. I don't know. I don't think I would play that one again. That one's kind of eh for me. I'm not gonna lie. There is a word I use to describe the robot's movement, but it's become offensive. So I have to describe it in a different way. Even though the word is kind of fitting. He's really jumpy and he jolts around. Yeah. It's, it's, it's weird and uncomforting. This is the robots. It's too fast for the to, for the eyes of a children. Yeah. <laughs> it's the same game. Uh, this was a little different, but at the end of the day, it is just the same format. Money man. This game, if uh, if Maze Quest is Super Mario Brothers, this game is like Monopoly Mario Party. Huh. There was so much to that game specifically that I know that they really thought through because one, it's like the more money you get, the, the higher your investments are in general, which is true to life. I mean, that's that's true. Very happy all the way through that gameplay specifically. That was a lot of fun. I know that the questions were like really easy because I was on level one, but like even still, even though the questions were like super easy, I it was still very enjoyable and it felt like a video game rather than some just like educational children's 
toy. That one was one of the more unique gameplay experiences, I think. You know, I, I like that the game has just a bunch of like maze quest uh, monsters. I think that was really cool. And it's multiplayer. Personally, it's my favorite one. Like really? Yeah. Huh. I like the concept of it. I think it really teaches money very well. Yeah, that's true. It doesn't teach capitalism, but it teaches counting. Oh boy. Oh no. It looks like Johnny like Johnny, doesn't it? Bro, I don't want to go in here. Oh, these guys are. Oh. Where? Yippee. Oh. No. No. I'm no. expecting a jump scare or something. I hate this. I hate this. Which is this. creepier, no. this or the, the bug no. one? No. You see how fast no. I no. <laughs> no. I was just like, nope. <laughs> look at the look at the face of look at the face of uh, of of Blit. He's just like, yeah, show me now. You gotta get out of here, kid. I'm trying to save you. Even the car's like, please save me. The the period. The, that's not a that's not a pupil. That's a period. But the car looks terrified. Yeah. He's just like. Help! I hate it. I hate it so much. Everything about it is bad. The music, the characters are so freaking creepy. The gameplay is just matching. You just match stuff, right? Which we've already seen a lot at this point. It's probably the worst matching game we've seen thus far. It is terrible. Do not play it. I do not recommend it. It's terrible. It's trash. I hate it. I knew it was going to be creepy. Even from the CD itself. I'm not exaggerating either. Like, I'm being 100% genuine right now. I legit hate that game. I played it for like a minute. So no, this one is trash. This is terrible. This is one of the worst ones. So I would say that's the... What, what are your thoughts on that? I think that's the worst one. Oh, definitely. I don't have much to go off of for this game because you think couldn't get the game to work right. Master Gecko's home row. Yeah, uh, I guess the only things I can th say about this game is the voice acting is a little funny, the pauses, the fact that the, that the doorbell rang, even though there's no door to make the door shake, I mean, to make the bell shake. I was actually excited to play a, a different kind of game because there's, I don't think there's any other typing games uh, from these developers. So I was like, oh cool, something new. I think it could have been a good game in general, but I literally couldn't play it because the controls weren't working. I don't know if that's a game problem. I don't know if it's a me problem. The map, uh, the map that Ethan pulled up kind of reminded me of Legend of Zelda, like the OG Legend of Zelda. And the lives, and those scrolls up there could possibly be lives. It, you, your friends, scrolls. I wish I had more to go off of, but this game seems to have promise. But that's just what I'm. That's just what I'm going off of. More like Master Gecko's home. No. What? I don't get it. Home row. Oh, I forgot the title already. <laughs> <laughs> that's how. It's that's how forgettable this game is. Yeah. Not again. No. Oh, well, you're creepy. No. Nice to know. Ah. He's looking into my soul. No, don't put that uh, Hit the no. dance. Play? Okay, it's gone. Tutorial. Ah, it's back. This is the place to be if you want to oh. know how to play the Voice acting's good, I guess. That animation is bad. Stupid models. I hate them. Moves, so you can okay. Jam on the dance Stop talking. Hmm. Stop talking. Okay, so character, creepy. Voice acting, good. Music, also okay. And the gameplay, it's actually kind of good. I think I understand the premise or what the whole game is about. I don't like the character whatsoever. I like the concept. You got math, but this math game was actually different than any of the other math games, right? Because this one was combining math with like a puzzle in a way because you had to chain them together there's no equal sign so that kind of threw me off a little bit but you just do you know math chains basically i i understand the potential that they were trying to go for and i don't think it worked too well so if it gave the option to shoot equal signs or allowed you to rotate those uh things around it could be a good game this is plants vs zombies for virgins no pun intended because this because the demographic is kids and kids are virgins Get it? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> it's so boring. It is, yeah, it kind of is. 
agriculture teaches agriculture and plants and how to not overwater and how to not underwater you have to answer some questions about the plants i think it's playable i think it's enjoyable some of the mechanics are a bit confusing at times but you know i probably just need to play it a bit more in order to like fully understand the mechanics but um overall though i think it's i think it's a good one is it supposed to teach responsibility like are the flowers supposed to be children and they're supposed to be fed and watered but i don't know why i would water my children you don't give your children water no i don't i don't splash water on them to keep them moist oh, okay I, yes, I bury my children and then I pour water on them. Yeah, who does it? Flomp Frog and the So-and-So is kind of one of those games that you need to, like, play after you've learned about radius or area of squares. Because it's like, again, if you show this little kid and said kid hasn't done the research on what it is, the kid's not going to know what the area is and it's going to be confused and most likely lose. It's geometry. Right, you gotta find the surface area of shapes. You played it like uh, Frogger in a way, except you jump on lily pads. Reminds me very much of like those old Leapster games where you had to like jump across. But yeah, in general, it reminds me of Frogger for sure. It was a good one. It wasn't bad. I wouldn't say it's awesome, but like it's a good game. This one's just trying way too hard. It's like, oh my gosh, just 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 ease up on the D. Just. Just ease up on the disco stuff, please. I understand you're trying to go for a thing, but I don't think anyone wants the thing. That one wasn't even bad. It was just kind of boring. It was because I was expecting a cooking game. I would actually be able to make recipes, you know, and cook stuff. No, it's a math game. It's not really what I was wanting or expecting. It was pretty eh. I think there are better uh, math games that this company has made. I don't think this is one of the good ones. I do appreciate the theme of cooking. I just wish it went along with it like it with, did with the agriculture one, which was actually about agriculture. I was hoping for a cooking game that was actually about cooking, but no. This isn't a game. This is a menu. So I think you're supposed to like input a bunch of stuff to help you stay on track, you know, which is nice because this is like from the 90s. So they didn't have the technology we have now using your computer to help you diet. I mean, this is just nutrition trivia or true or false stuff mixed in with a little bit of find the key uh it's 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 meta compared to the other games i can see how some kids could find it fun because it's like i know the answer to that but a lot of kids could probably say it would probably have the same reaction to these other games again i'm not the target demographic anymore for these uh for these games so so that was the last one so that one was about food and measurements of said food Definitely one of the more unique ones, I think. It had a cinematic at the beginning, you know? I don't know. Maybe a little kid should play these instead. Except the scary ones. Don't let your kids play those. So two things. One, Chem Racer. The problem with Chem Racer is that it's actually online, and I found a physical copy, but I've already kind of ordered uh, most of them. So I think what I'm going to do is play the online version because I don't really need the physical disc. There's really no reason for that, to be honest. The other problem is that, remember how the website uh, got revamped and the old website's dead? And we have not only our evidence, but there's a literal video on the internet also showing the same evidence that we already have. So either way, I'm right on that front of how I have evidence for that. Apparently I'm not the only one anymore, I thought I was. But anyways, that video on the internet shows uh some of the online games so i think we're gonna look at those specifically in the online realm there isn't much on the internet to be honest besides like reviews and stuff like that but video evidence is very spare and there's a lot of like discs that you can buy on ebay but not a lot on amazon regarding the ods so i think that's interesting but i already basically have all the ones on ebay anyways so there's one thing that popped up that I legit was not expecting, like, at all. Lost Games. Now, because we are dealing with very old material, decades old, and we have newly updated software, sometimes media can either be corrupted or it's just out of date, it's, or it's so old that it literally just can't be accessed by updated software. So either 
I have to find some really old computer that can play super old games because everything I try just doesn't work or it's just lost to time and I just didn't do hard enough to try to retrieve it even though I've been trying to make it work for an entire year at this point so do I just say that it's lost games lost media or do I not drop the documentary simply because I haven't been able to fully make all of the games work because the whole point of this was to go super in depth and talk about every single game in depth because no other place has done that but I can't do that when all of the games don't work either they don't work or I literally can't find them even though there's photo evidence that they exist. One that I was super disappointed about was Professor Egbert. I remember playing that game as a child and I love that game and that's one that doesn't work that I've tried. I literally have the disc. I've done a bunch of different things to make it work and it just doesn't. Superhero Math Challenge for some reason said it had no data, tried everything, just doesn't work on my computer. Fantastic Words Gizmo doesn't work. The Great Galaxy Grid Game doesn't work. Mind Bending Magic Show doesn't work. And then the three that I have photo evidence of that I literally can't find to acquire or purchase, Animal Extravaganza, Math Barge, and Puffin Pursuits, all of which I have photos for, but I can't find a physical copy of the thing. <sighs> Who's to say that even if I were to get these discs in my hands, that they would even work? Because some of these, as I've just stated, literally just don't work. And I have no clue where I'm going to find some super old computer that will all of a sudden just like make all the games work in some bow tying finale, right? Like I'm supposed to just magically find some computer that just works for everything. But I don't know anybody that has that. Literally none. So do I spend a month trying to find one person that I can actually go to in person and say, hey, I want to try out these games. Who's to say that it would even work? Who's to say I would, I would even find a person? And I'm mad about this because I want this to be a complete thing. But when not all the games work, like when some of them don't work, I can't have a complete narrative driven thing where everything is in a bow and it sucks and it's annoying because I've worked on this for an entire year and I still feel like it's not even close to being done simply because not everything is recorded and simply because not all of the games are working even though that was leading up to everything, right? The whole reason I, I did the in-depth with the, the founder and the employees and with my brother and then we looked at all the games is like a finale thing like, wow, this is really cool because now everything that I've been talking about leading up to it, we're finally seeing head first. But guess what? <laughs> guess what? Not all of them work, which is so sad and frustrating because the games that don't work, most of them, I haven't even played yet. So they really are lost to time. Unless I can do something about it, which I don't know if I can. Genuinely don't know if I can. <sighs> I just can't do anything about it. It really sucks and it's a very interesting thing in life when you feel like you just can't do anything about it even though you want to so bad just can't because <laughs> you just don't have the right tools you know it doesn't make sense to buy a whole new computer for one specific thing and then never use it again it doesn't make sense what, so what's like name a game like an education um, game? Um, Maze That's... Quest. It was a big one. Dude, I did not get scammed. I got it's a this bonus. one. <gasps> yes, we got That's Maze Quest. We got the shiny Charizard. Yes! We got the shiny Charizard. Ooh, the shiny Charizard. Let's go. This is the best one out of all of them. Maze Quest. Maze Quest is the best ODS game to ever exist. I used to play this one all the time literally all the time it was one i would always go to this was the game that i remembered 
the vaguest, but liked the most. It was like RPG before RPG was even my uh, was even my thing. It's the most fun. It's the most fleshed out. There's lore. There's story. It's like an educational RPG about grammar and like learning gerunds and infinitives and those words that I was actually I was shocked that I didn't know when I played the game. There's just when you reach level 20, specifically in that game, there's so much stuff that really challenges you. Whereas level one, it's just a simple square with simple questions. But once you go to level 20, because that's what I wanted to test out, I wanted to see what the hardest difficulty was in this game. And it's actually challenging, which I was shocked about because I was having some trouble on the questions and I thought this was just like a educational children's game. But turns out apparently uh, <laughs> you can actually challenge yourself with this to a worrying degree. <laughs> And that's something I was not expecting. So turning up the level all the way when you're not expecting something challenging was kind of an eye-opening thing. So you can actually make the map bigger and we got into some trouble because it was too big and we couldn't get out. But yeah, the fact that it allows you to make the map that big is impressive. And I, I don't know how it can, I don't know how a computer could survive something that huge. This computer was worrying like crazy. I could play this game nowadays and I am still learning. And I think that's really cool because, you know, I've been out of school for a lot of years, right? And so it was really interesting to kind of challenge my English knowledge. And boy, was I showed up by a 90s educational game. But yeah, this, this was where it all started for me. This was the, this was the game. There are many Ohio to seek to stock for games, but for me, this was the game. One of the best games thus far. Don't know if that's just Nostalgia Glasses talking, but it's got more to offer than those other games. There's a monster Wikipedia. There's items you can collect that actually do stuff. Not to mention that music. That music is one of the things there we that uh, helped me remember this. But it uses the mascot Blit, which is like the main mascot of ODS specifically. He was in a lot of the earlier games for sure, like Robot Challenge and, and Air Explorer. He was also in that. But generally, if you have never played an ODS game in your life, Maze Quest is the perfect one to start on. It's the most fleshed out. It's got the most heart. There's a like a huge variety of levels, each that are different in setting, which is really cool. And then if you do the main missions, you actually level up. And oh yeah, there's a level up system in the game. There's items in the game. It's like if you were to combine Legend of Zelda with like Final Fantasy, cause like it's this weird turn-based mashup, except it's always your turn because the CPU isn't gonna attack you. Cause you know, that's not what it is. You're supposed to learn, not fight the other people. But anyways, Maze Quest, the best ODS game ever. And I'm so glad that that game was the one to hold up. And that game is still the best ODS game that I have discovered as of recently. Shiny. Oh my gosh. The Maze shiny okay. Charizard. This is like the mascot of ODS. Th this guy right uh, here. If it wasn't for me, Ethan probably wouldn't have made this a series. So I'm glad I got to do this whole project thing with them. It was, it's, it's a lot of fun. <sighs> I feel like I mentally understand like that the company is probably gonna go bankrupt at this point. Like, especially after last year, like I would not be surprised. Uh, it's just, I'm just shocked that they didn't go digital because they could have saved the company if they, you know, brought everything over to digital and then still started, you know, if they continued making games, but they haven't made a game in a very long time. I just think it's interesting that nobody else has really like made a video about this or just a documentary or just any sort of media about it, except like reviews about it on their website. It, it, it feels good to be like one of the first people to really dive deep into this topic specifically, because I think it brings up a lot of questions. It's a very investigative topic for sure. I just wish I could talk to the employees more. Maybe I should get back into contact with them and uh, see if they uh, want to try again. Because part of me was like impatient, you know, with them, which makes literally no sense because this has been going on for like eight months. But like, 
part of me is impatient and then part of me is also kind of like well we got to get moving we got to keep on chugging along and at this point i already have like the base edit done except for like the last bit i have no clue how the frick i'm going to conclude this if i'm honest but it'll it'll just happen eventually so it'll happen naturally that's usually how good endings work what have i learned from this that maybe if the founder invested his money into his company to actually improve with the current technology that we have now, I honestly believe that they would still be in business. I honestly believe that they would still be making very educational kids games. Obviously, there's some hits with the games. There's some misses. There's some that we will just never know if they're good or not because some of them just don't work anymore due to outdated tech. One thing I do know is that if he were to invest his money back into his company instead of using the money for himself, I genuinely believe that ODS would still be alive to this day.